can turn into not P or not Q. So if, if you say it is not the case that both of these occur, then you're saying it is definitely the case that one of these fails. And that's a logical equivalency. Um, and of course you could do it this way too. If it is not the case that one of these occurs, then it is the case, get this, this is a powerful one. If you have not with a, a disjunctive there, then the result will be non-P and non-Q. So you negate both of those necessarily by putting a negation between the OR. Because what you're saying there is not P and not Q and not both of them. Not any combination of P and Q. P and Q both fail. And that's what we're saying over here. P fails and Q fails. So that's De Morgan. Now I know you're pausing the video to write these down on your notes, right? Now this one's idempotence, or you could use IDM. Uh, and get this, this one's easy. If you've got P, then using idempotence you can get P and P. Or if you've got P, you can get P or P. And then there's transposition. Get this. Trans, right? If P, then Q by transposition is logically equivalent to saying if not Q, then not P. Right? Write that down. If not Q, then not P is equivalent to saying if P, then Q. Transposition. Exportation. Exportation. And next is exportation. EXP. If P, then Q, then R. If P, then, and we have P that sets off the following situation. If Q, then R. If P, then if Q, then R, turns into if P and Q, if P and Q, then R. So if it's in this form, you can move those over one, the parentheses over one, and turn that into an ampersand and say, if both of these obtain, then we get R. That's easy. That's related to the, I believe, the emotus tollens, or which is it? The hypothetical syllogism. That's related to the hypothetical syllogism. And I know you're pausing the video to get these down. Anytime you have P and Q or R, you can distribute that into P and Q or P and R because we already know P obtains and we also know that either Q or R obtains so we know either P obtains with Q or we know that P obtains with R. It's one of those. And lastly, we have equivalence. And you, this is how they abbreviate it in the book here. You could do EQ for all I care. You know, you don't need it this big. The biconditional. P if and only if Q uh, and we have two different ways that it can go, of course. That transforms into if P then Q and if Q then P, right? That's just... Now, this is exactly the condition you have to set up 
to introduce the biconditional. So earlier, if you wrote the biconditional introduction rule down, what you show in the logical inference in that is if P then Q, and then you show that if Q then P, and then you can introduce a biconditional. So to eliminate the biconditional, we get equivalence. We get this here. And then we have the other form of it. Now get this one down. This one's interesting. P and Q. Or not P and not Q. So it, it, it's equivalent to saying either they both occur or they both fail. So there we are. There's the rules. Now to uh, chapter two for the nitty gritty. Um, so get ready. Here it comes. We'll just practice a bit with some basic sentences, do some truth tables, and uh, then we'll get started on some serious hardcore logic.